since today is May 4th, um, yesterday, the 3rd of May, became the first day in which, as amateur radio operators, um, we need to do an RF um, exposure calculation for our antenna systems. So, And I know, Dave, you were talking, we were talking a little bit about this before the, um, see if I can make this a little bigger. Um, oops. Uh, okay. Yeah, what and, uh, the, the significance of yesterday was uh, there's always been a requirement that that amateur stations comply with the um, RF exposure, not mm -hmm. only to themselves and their family, but to to other people that might be in the vicinity, whether it's your next door neighbor or a person at an adjacent camping site or or someone just walking through the park. It's our, it's our responsibility to not create an, uh, an RF overexposure potential yes and, exactly and, and so what happened uh the the awrl has actually created they've taken this extremely complex formula and broken it down into a way in which you can go online on their website which you're putting on the screen right now but yep and and by entering the variables which which is basically your power output what mode you're operating on, what your transmit cycle is, how, you know, how many minutes are you on, how many minutes do you go to receive, how many minutes are you on back and forth like that, the, the gain of your antenna, and the frequency that you're operating at. Those are, those are the fundamental uh, variables. Yes. And once you enter all of those values, it will automatically calculate the RF at uh, at the uh, safe limits as determined by uh, i don't i don't think it's the fcc i think it's uh oh good lord i can't remember but it's another federal agency well it's the fcc I mean, but it's the it's the uh, um division of operating operations and um engineering uh, i i think is what it's called um the it's the oet bulletin see if i can yeah. pull that up um so anyway, what, what happens is you, you, you say, well, okay, I, you know, I'm only running X amount of power. I've been doing this for 50 years. I'm not dead yet, so I must be okay, right? And, <laughs> you, know, you know, that's that's uh, that's one attitude to take, but the FCC is not pleased with that attitude. So, so they've said you, it's your responsibility to make these calculations and document that, in fact, you are in compliance. Yes. And, and uh, you know, a lot of guys just kind of blow it off. I don't do that. I, um, I'm a little paranoid. I, I've built TV stations for 40 years. I was around uh, 200,000 watt transmitters on a regular basis in stations that had ERPs of like five megawatts. So, so we were pretty adamant about following the the exposure limits and i i personally know some tower climbers that over the years of many tower climbing jobs that they were overexposed and they did suffer the health consequences of that so it's serious business but when you run when you crunch the numbers for the amateur guys the the two the, there's a couple of things that really affect the spacing that uh, you might not think about one is the frequency that you're operating at mm -hmm. the difference the difference in rf exposure at 80 meters is significantly lower than it would be at say 10 meters yes and 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 so for instance i i you know i crunched some numbers through the awrl calculator this morning just out of curiosity so if you're running a hundred watts Okay, and, I'll pull I'll and, pull this up again. So if we're gonna so we're gonna put in a hundred watts, okay. Yeah. So and, and Michael doesn't usually run a hundred, and neither do I. But let's say that you're in the park, yep. and you're running a hundred watts, and you're running single sideband like Michael single, does all the time. Yep. And your transmit cycle is is going to be 
determined by uh, a pull down screen. So if you if you click in if you click on uh, transmit cycle, it will give you a a bunch of numbers to choose from, and, and it's in minutes. It's in increments of minutes. Yeah. So most so so if you're a rag chewer, you might talk for ten minutes and listen for ten minutes. But in a typical POTA environment, we're pretty pretty go listen go listen go listen. So I put in one minute on and off. Okay. The antenna gain, yeah, the antenna gain is uh, another uh, variable, and they actually, if you, uh, there's a thing you can click on there, and it, it will actually tell you what the antenna gain is of a lot of typical antennas. And uh, quite often, there you go. Uh, yeah. Our most common would be a vertical, you know, a quarter wave vertical, and that actually has a gain of 1.5 dB. There we go. Yeah, so, uh, uh, half half wave dipole is very common too, and that uh, and that I think is like two point one or two point two dB or something yeah. like that. And then yeah, uh, put in the and then you put in the operating frequency, and I use three point eight megahertz. Which you're going to go down on the eighty meter band. So yeah, we will start on eighty meters. Okay. And uh, back on the mode, we just we just put in a single sideband. And single sideband is kind of unique because the waveform of single sideband is dependent on the characteristics of, of a person's voice, and we're all different. So, mm -hmm. it's, so you have to. So they give you an average number, and they say that if you're using a lot of processing, your your typical modulation would be uh, like an average of forty or fifty percent. If, if without processing, it's really only about twenty percent. Twenty percent. So, but but with the with the digital modes or with CW, it's a hundred percent. Yep. Uh, when you're transmitting, and uh, so so that's an important variable. But it, but anyway, if you look down at the calculation, you come up with the with the minimum spacing. And again, I I can't read the uh, the screen here, but. But they give you two values, and the first value is the limit that you can have for people who know what you are doing. So that that would be you and maybe your wife. Okay, we call that the controlled environment, is because you've yeah. got physical control over the people that are in, yeah. in that and, are being and exposed. So yeah, yeah, and they're aware of the situation and aware and, of it. Yes, and are mm -hmm. and are and are somewhat compliant with, with what you're doing. Yep. The, the second scenario is the, the stranger, you know, your next door neighbor, the, uh, somebody walking, walking down, down the, the street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that limit is lower. Okay. Because yep. those people are, are being caught completely unaware and unknowing of what you're doing. So for this person, uh, in, in this example, for a, a perfect stranger, I, I, I hope I, my numbers came out the same as yours, but I came out with the uh, limit being like 12.4 milliwatts per square centimeter. Yep. And the I minimum space, yeah, the minimum spacing then is 0. 0.8 feet. Okay. okay. I got point, I got 0.49 feet or so. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. But, One of our numbers didn't go in exactly the same. Yeah. But. But either way, 0 0.49, 0 0.8. Okay, we're talking about inches. Yep. Okay. On the so eighty if meter band mm -hmm. on the eighty meter band with a hundred watt single side band, it's just a, it's just like a half a foot. Okay, yep. that's that's not a problem because nobody's going to be standing within eight inches of your of your eighty meter vertical. Mm -hmm. That's not an issue. Okay. But but if you do the same scenario on ten meters. So if I say 28 megahertz. Yeah. And I calculate. In the controlled environment, it's 1.6 feet. And an uncontrolled environment, it would be 3.7 feet. This, yeah. So. Did, did you run 100 watts? I did 100. You know, I think it's because I had no, um, I had no speech processing. If I go yeah. heavy speech... Yeah, um, yep. there we go. Two and a half and five point eight feet. Yeah. Okay. Now think about this. The only thing you changed was the frequency that you were operating at. Yeah. And you went from eighty meters where you needed to be like six or seven inches away 
to 10 meters, we're all of a sudden, now we're talking about almost six feet. Six away. feet away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So, I, I mean, a lot of people, uh, you know, you wouldn't expect that. So let's talk, now let's talk, um, you know, since we've, um, we've talked HF, let's talk VHF. So we got a 50 watt mobile. Yeah. FM. Yes. Yeah. So, so you want to go to uh, two meters? Try that. We're gonna, yep. And we're going to go two meters. Um, and yeah. we're going to, we're going to, we're going to change the duty cycle a little bit from one minute on and then two minutes off. So yep. we'll say, you know, we'll say you're driving down the road and um, just having a, you know, having a talk on the repeater, uh, yep. 146 megahertz. Yep. Uh, one point we're going to, we'll leave the gain. Uh, we'll leave the gain is the same. Cause we'll just say, we'll have a quarter wave on the roof of the car. Um, yep. and calculate. So, uh, minimum safe distance, uh, 2.27 feet on a controlled environment and five feet for an uncontrolled environment. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, and the numbers that I put in uh, would have been a little but we're slightly different, but I came up with 6.2, you know, so, yeah. so, so we're still talking about five or six feet. Yep. So, so if you're in a situation where you're standing right next to the antenna, uh, if it's mounted to your vehicle and you're standing next to it or, or, or what it, worse yet, if the antenna is actually attached to the radio mm -hmm. and you're holding onto the mic cord and talking into this thing at 50 watts, you, you've got a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so if you have a two meter handy talkie, and uh, and you're holding it up to your ear, I hope mm -hmm. you're not doing that. I hope you're not doing that. But let's say that it's on a belt clip on your belt, yep. and you've got a hand mic that you're talking into. Okay, the radio is not close to your head, but it's close to another vital body part that uh, you probably don't want to overexpose either. So your kidneys, there. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, let's talk. Yeah, because Alan asked. You know what are the uh, what are the numbers for a handheld radio where you're actually holding the transmitter? Um, let's talk about that. Uh, so power yeah. at the antenna, five watts. Yeah, uh, I, I, I I I did that one. I crunched it five watts on two meter FM, and it comes out to one point nine feet. But now that's with an antenna gain of one point five. If you've got a, I I actually I actually used an antenna gain of one. One because okay. yeah yeah because because I don't think most guys are using a quarter wave vertical on their handy talkies no so I figure it's a rubber duck of some kind and and so I I decreased it to just one I said one minute on and two minutes off that's um that's a one minute is a long transmission for an HT uh yeah. let's see here yeah and I came up with. Um, safe distance of 0.6783, you know, um, so a uh, half a foot, uh, yep. for an uncontrolled environment, it should be one and a half foot. So it's, yeah. um, so your kidneys are uh, how far away from that handy tug? <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, but, uh, yeah. So if you're holding this, you know, you're going to want to keep, yeah, you're going to want to keep that antenna, you know, away, you know, at least six inches away from your, um, from from your head there to be to be yeah. safe. Now that's that's what yeah. a long that's of course that's a long transmission cycle and your duty cycle may actually be quite um you know quite less. So and you'll notice that as we adjust the duty cycle here, the the less time we're transmitting, the closer yeah. our minimum safe distance can actually be. So yeah. exactly. So and and I think just to kind of closing things up here um, just for a little conclusion. So um, I lost my page here, but so what do we do with these things? Well, I believe the FCC doesn't, you know, we don't file our reports with the FCC. Um, this is something that we would need to keep in our own personal logs. So we would do what we would, we, we need to do the calculations. Um, you can print the calculations out. You know, there's a, there was a print button here. Yep. And then you keep them for your own personal file. So if there's ever a question on what your antenna systems do, you can say, well, I, I've done the paperwork and I can, so I can show you that I am within compliance of, of regulation. Yeah.
KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpol-antenna.com.